Right, so today I'm gonna show you how to work with custom inputs in React Hook form. We're gonna do two ways and why you should use one or why you should use the other. Before we begin, we have to have a project and this project should have React Hook form as its dependency and nothing else. This is just the starter that I've been using from one of my previous videos that I link. You can just clone the starter and then work from there if you wanna follow along. We're gonna be using React Hook form, a great library. It's a must have if you wanna do anything with advanced forms and it's very efficient it causes less re-renders and it's a huge performance boost if you're going to be working with forms or anything more complex than some basic two text input forms so let's begin we first want to work with custom inputs we don't want to work with the regular input component input tag because the project will grow and we will need more advanced features now to do that what we're going to be doing is we're going to create our own input component and we can go to source here and create a directory called components and let's name it input.tsx now this is going to be our custom input component we want to create this input and we want to use forward ref here we want to pass references in the future because we will eventually need them this is one step that's going to save us a lot of time when we want to update something so we're going to say props and we're going to give them give them types but not right now and we're going to give it them give it give this input a ref now this is going to be a html input element and we will return a simple div with a label and an input so we're going to also add an input here and let's export export this so we can say export default input okay now let's import the ref here we're going to give the, the type for the props here and we're going to also set the reference here so we're going to have ref is equal to the ref one and now we can work from here this will be our custom component we can also add error messages here in the future message should be here and we can add any style we want anything else so let's just give them some basic styles we're going to say gap two and the input should probably have a border because we're using tailwind so it should have some border that's going to be a black border. These props here, we have to add types for them. So we're going to add an interface here at the top. And we're going to say input props. And it's going to extend. It should extend, if I can spell the extends, HTML props and then HTML input elements. So we want the props only for input elements. Now, the label part is missing and the error message is missing. So that's why we will add a label here. And the label is... A must and we're gonna add an error here which is not a must it's an optional prop that can be passed and we will change this any here into the input props and now we have type safety so that means that I can say label here and we'll have a corresponding label for it well actually first we should we should destructure this so I'm gonna say props and let's say label error and then let's say input props so everything else should be tied to this input here. So we're going to say input props and spread them over. We're going to say label and the error. We can also add conditional logic. So for example, if the error is available, so if there is an error, we should display this p tag with the error message. Okay, so now we have our form, our input for the form setup. There shouldn't be any other work and this ref is going to come into play later on when we have more and more requirements for our inputs the complexity is low and i'm going to leave the link to this to this extension here that i'm using in web store so now that we have our input we should create a form now we want type safety so we're going to first create an interface here it's going to say let's say let's just name it form and we're going to have one username that's going to be needed for the input now let's instantiate the use form hook let's create it so we're going to say use form and we're going to give it the form interface here so that we know what we're dealing with we're dealing with the form above here let's add a register let's add a form state and extract the errors so we want to have uh, we want to be able to access the errors from the from our form now comes the custom input part so let's expand our form we can add a button 
that's type submit because we have to have some way for the user to submit the, the form. And let's just give it a name submit. Now let's import our input from the components that we have. Let's give it a label, for example, username. And now we can give it an error too, which is going to be errors dot. And you can see the username part is already available because of the types we added here. So we're going to say errors dot username dot message. So if a message exists, we'll pass it on. Now you're saying, how do we sh send the name and everything else? We can use the register from our use form hook, and we're just going to spread it over. So we're going to add three dots, use the spread operator and add the username. Now it's going to complain and we can just add the username inference type here. And that's it. Now our form will work, but let's say we want to add validation. Instead of us passing validations as a prop or something else, we can just add options here, an options object. And let's just say the minimum length, length should be a value of six and the message should be uh, minimum, minimum six characters. Now let's see how this form will work in our browser. So if I open up my browser right now, we got this form and we got the username and the submit value. Now, if I open my log here and I reload, nothing's happening. Why? Because we don't have a submit. We have to add the submit value here. So we're going to come back to our IDE and we're going to add a submit handler on our form component. So we're going to get handle submit from our use form hook. And I'm going to say on submit handle submit, and we're going to pass our own submit fa function. So we're going to say on form submit, we're going to pass it the values here. So this should be, these values should correspond to this form. It should be typed automatically. So if I say values dot username, it's not showing. If it's not showing, you can just add the type here. So then you can add, you can have types for your form submission. So we're going to log these values and we're going to pass this function here. Now, if we go back to our to our browser, we can reload the page and I can say tenacity. If I submit, there it is. So we got the username here. Now, if I submit and I don't have enough characters, you can see that the form is working. It's it's instant. It's performant. We don't have many re-renders and also the error messages are working as expected in just nine lines of code. So if we want to expand this input, we can do whatever we want here inside the component and we will just need these nine required lines. If we need an on change event here, we won't be adding it through this this way because then we'll have to get the prop here inside the input and then add it on our component. That's not scalable and it can cause problems in the code when we have multiple different on change event handlers. The other way that we want to handle this is actually to use a controller component that a React hook form provides for us. So instead of this, we'll just comment this out and we're going to add a controller component. So we're going to say controller. And let's add the name for it. And we will add the username from our type here. And we also have to add the control to it. So we just want to essentially pass everything to our custom input from this controller. And this controller will have on change, on blur, and so it has some exposed fields. And we can just pass the input here. We can spread it over on our input. And after that, we can add our errors it's the username dot messages and we can also add our label our label is a necessary user experience functionality since we added this we can go back to our component here and now when we open our console let's type something in it says there's a a error message saying that the component is controlled then uncontrolled to fix this you just have to go back to your id and say default value is an empty string or anything else that you might need so for now we're going to say empty string let's go back and we can reload the page type something in submit it works but now if we want to add a custom event here for example on change on this input here if we spread this we have the on change and I, we can say rest input fields we can pass the rest of the input fields here and we have on change event so i can say on change we can trigger the necessary on change that we need for 
the form to work for the fields to register for the error messages to pop up but we can also add our custom logic here so we can say let's just log the current value or let's say log something changed and if we go back to our browser we reload every time that i change something you can see that the something changed is being logged so if i remove this it's it works so that's why i rec recommend using controllers instead of using just the regular component and passing on change values to it because controllers are more clean and these controllers working with them will also help you when you work with third-party libraries for example mantine or material material ui because then you can pass ref to, ref to it to them and essentially you can have this field validation with custom components so this is something that's worthwhile using instead of just using the regular input and using this register both are fine but if you need something more fine-tuned then the controller is an obvious choice that should be it i hope you learned something thanks for watching